I grew up in a small Southern California town where snow days were unheard of, but smoke days were a regular occurrence. As a child, I remember opening the front door to a green lawn completely covered in stark white ash and catching falling ash in my hands like snowflakes. I would hear in the news and overhear in hushed conversations about the terrifying destruction unleashed by these raging infernos. I was scared. These wildfires shaped me, as I imagine recent wildfires have shaped many of you as well. Year after year of record-breaking wildfires, we have been through so much together. How could it not? In my childhood, I had a recurring night terror, one that I was trying to save my family from a harrowing wildfire, a wall of flame rushing at us as I ran helplessly between sisters and parents, desperately trying to urge them along but never with any resolve. As a young adult, I enrolled in an educational program at a nature reserve my grandmother used to take me to. One session was taught by a local indigenous man who told us a different story of fire. He shared how fire was used by his tribe for millennia to tend and nurture the oaks and grasses there. He showed us the many flowers that exist as tiny dormant seeds for up to hundreds of years, just waiting for a fire to wake them and give them the freedom to bloom. He shared a truth foundational to understanding this place and how to care for it. Yet it was one that I had never heard before, that people had lived collaboratively with fire, and that fire brought and supported life here since time immemorial. This shook me and sent me on a lifelong journey, because in a world full of so many challenges that feel insurmountable, this was a problem with a known solution. We just hadn't grasped it yet. I've been guided by many mentors along my journey, indigenous colleagues who continue to burn despite the horrific impacts of cultural oppression and genocide, as well as many others who have dedicated their careers to breaking down the barriers that keep people separate from the land, teaching folks of all backgrounds that fire is a tool for good, a medicine for land and people, and its use, a responsibility. This community of mentors has guided me along my journey, and I am here today to extend this community to you. Put your hand up if you are a nature lover. Yeah, <laughs> any hikers or backpackers in the audience? How about some tree huggers? <laughs> Backyard birders? I see you nature lovers. I'm right there with you. But guess what? We are loving these lands to death. Our no-touch, hands-off approach to preservation after a century of clear-cut logging, mining, and overdevelopment is putting the final blow on ecosystems that have been resilient for millennia. It is time for a change. The famous Buddhist teacher, Thich Nhat Hanh, wrote, to love without knowing how to love hurts the one we love. But this tenet holds true beyond just human interaction. I would argue it is a universal truth that in order to love something well, we must deeply understand it. So, this land has been home to indigenous peoples for thousands of years. Through their enduring stewardship, people have been deeply woven into the very fabric of these ecosystems. This land and many of the animals and plants that live here depend on the intentional use of fire wielded in thoughtful ways. Ecosystems that define this place, our oak woodlands, our redwoods, our coastal prairies, become sick or completely disappear when we remove the fire they depend on people to provide. I am going to repeat that because it is so counterintuitive if you grew up under the reign of Smokey Bear. <laughs> Ecosystems that define this place, our oak woodlands, our redwoods, our coastal prairies, become sick or completely disappear 
When we remove the fire, they depend on people, on us, to provide. As our world is rapidly changing around us, we need to amplify indigenous voices, the wisdom of traditional ecological knowledge, and the ethical frameworks still practiced among tribal communities today. We have an obligation to carry good fire forward for the sake of all, and we must do it together. There can be no other way. We, all of us, have a responsibility to this place we say we love, to understand it more deeply, and to embrace a culture of stewardship. A culture of stewardship brings us together around a common cause and reconnects us with the natural world. In a culture of stewardship, we can no longer see ourselves as separate or alone or left at the mercy of wildfire. In a culture of stewardship, my indigenous colleagues from the Karuk tribe describe a flipped narrative, one where we focus on human services for ecosystems rather than ecosystem services for people. In a culture of stewardship, we know that when we come together to steward this place, this tending of the land, it serves us as well. Whether we're pruning dead branches from ancient oaks or using low-intensity fire to breathe life into the woodland floor, from this action emerges a sense of purpose, a sense of place. By understanding just how fire-dependent these ecosystems are, we learn that we, too, are dependent on fire. And with this realization that we do not just tolerate fire, but depend on it, we take one step closer to living in harmony with the natural world. So this is my call to you. Create generational change. Become a part of this vibrant community of friends and neighbors carrying good fire forward to the land together. You do not have to be an ecologist or a professional firefighter to join this cause. Yes, there are ecologists and tribal members, farmers and firefighters and landowners, but there are also baristas, computer coders, artists, and so many more. Because your profession or personal identity does not define your relationship with the land. Rather, your existence in this fire-dependent and human-dependent place does. What's more, this vibrant, robust, existing community will be right here by your side every step of the way. We will help you build the skills, gather the equipment, understand the practice, and be ready for opportunities to carry good fire forward into our forests and grasslands, our woodlands and wildlife corridors, and our beautiful backyards. So I'll leave you with this vision that I hope may become a shared one. A little girl steps outside her front door on a cool morning in early fall. There is excitement in the air today. The community is gathering, as they have many times before, around the shared responsibility to steward this place. The little girl will be the first person to light the fire today, with her grandmother and all of her wisdom by her side. Wildfires still happen, but the community is not afraid. They have built their homes in places and ways that acknowledge and honor fire's role here. They have been tending their forests and woodlands for generations now, and they have been tending community, too. They have found harmony with fire. <laughs>